Good evening. I'd like to call the Tuesday, June 16th, 2015, City of Oldsmar City Council meeting to order. If you would please rise for our invocation and our pledge that will be done by our City Attorney, Mr. Tom Trask. Heavenly Father, send down your blessing on this meeting of the City Council. Give the City Council members a clear sense of duty and lead them to a faithful discharge of the same. Direct them in their deliberations at this meeting so that all things may be done to thy glory of thy name and the welfare of the people of the City of Oldsmar. This we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and once again, welcome. Uh, to my right is uh, not Bruce Haddock, it's our acting city manager, Lynn Reeves. Um, Bruce is on vacation, I believe, up visiting his son. Uh, who's in the military, so uh, welcome, Lynn. Thank you. And this is the first time in this new building up here, right? It's a different view from up here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> our first item tonight on the agenda is our Citizens Open Forum. It allows you to address the City Council. We only ask that you uh, keep to a couple of rules. State your name and address clearly for the record. Keep it to no more than five minutes. And you can speak towards agenda items tonight. But if they are public hearing items, which we do have a couple, we ask that you keep those comments to such time that comes up on the agenda. Uh, having said that, this side of the room, I assume. Tony? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you just came to see us. No, I did. I came to see the plants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful. Um, will that be? Mm -hmm. That's right. First, I have to put, oh. I have to put this up there. A little prop. My name is Tony Gross, 711 Sandleaf Avenue, Oldsmar. I have two requests this evening. My first request is that the DVD, um, is it playing? Go ahead and play. Okay, thank you. Can you turn the audio down, please? Just do it with the audio. My first request is at the Remembering Florida's Fallen Photo Exhibit, as seen in the video, will be set up and displayed the week of September the 21st to the 25th in City Hall. This would be prior to the Gold Star Mothers and Families Day ceremony, the last Sunday in September, which is September the 27th at 10 a.m. at Oldsmar's Waterfront Park. Okay, if you want me to, do you want me to re-say that, redo that because of the music? Okay. My first request is that the Remember Florida's Fallen photo exhibit, which you're seeing now on the, um, on the video, um, will be set up and displayed the week of September 21st until the 25th in City Hall. This will be prior to the Gold Star Mothers and Families Day ceremony, which is the last Sunday of September at 10 a.m., September 27th at Oldsmar's Waterfront Park. The display would highlight the reason for the annual ceremony that the city of Oldsmar graciously has hosted for the past three years. Oldsmar and Orlando are the only two cities that I'm aware of to date in the state of Florida that hosts a solemn ceremony that remembers our fallen and honors their families. Mr. Keenan, and I can't pronounce his name, I think it's Cope who is the president and CEO of Curlew Hills Memorial Gardens in Palm Harbor, is the guardian of this display. He will set it up and take it down. The dimensions for this, as you can see, it's quite tall, are nine feet tall by 110 feet in length. So we would need a large area for this. And my suggestion and request is that we use City Hall, maybe the hallway, if that would work. Um, for this, and if City Hall's not available, then perhaps Cypress Forest Recreation Center might be another location. My second request is for the use of a large tent for the Gold Star Mothers and Families Day Ceremony, and that is, of course, Sunday, September the 27th at 10 a.m. So there's two requests. Thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you for allowing me to make these requests. Thank you. And if you remember, this was presented to us yep. back in August. 
2011, and I'm very appreciative to my city council and my community for remembering us. Thank you. <clears throat> Lynn's made a couple of notes, so we'll, when Bruce gets back, we'll see what we can coordinate okay. for both those requests. And Tony, yeah. I saw you on TV twice in one day. Yes. <laughs> Probably had the same it? outfit on, she, too. She was, it, it, for the first one was for the... Um, <clears throat> Pinellas County. Pinellas Fallen County. And then the second one was, what was what was that for? It was a um, Tampa Boys Tampa Preparatory Boys. Academy. Um, they uh, uh, purchased and erected the okay. first Gold Star Families Memorial Monument in the state of Florida. Right. right. All 430 of those boys were there to help with the dedication. It was amazing. I was going to call you, but I'm like, she's too busy to take a call. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been um, it has been challenging. It's been an adventure working with the Pinellas County Board of County Commissioners. They've been very gracious and worked with us. They didn't know what to expect. One day, the Gold Star Mothers, we would be crying. The next day, time we'd be hugging. So they just had a whole... It was a wonderful experience. Right, it was on Bay it. News 9, right? Or Pardon me? It was on one of the news channels. One was on Channel 3, and the I other one was on one of the news. It was a news channel, I think, yeah. That Tony, was a great experience with my, my county. Tony, do you need us to do city. anything else besides the tent? Because I know last time when you were preparing for this event, you had to put a lot of time and effort into it. It's not easy. So is there anything else that you need from the city? I think it's just the addition of the tent. Yeah. Last year, um, they supplied the... I already got the, the thumbs up from Lynn. That's already... Yeah, it's, it's already in place. Of well, it's not in place, but <laughs> I know I had bought it up before the tent issue, but I wasn't sure where it was at. Sure. If it had to go before before the Veterans Advisory Board or not. Nope, it's all taken care of, and then we'll figure out about the display and how to okay. maybe break it up so That'd people can great. get in the bathrooms and what have you, yeah. and, <laughs> elevator, <laughs> and elevators. And <laughs> it's a beautiful display, and it, it would like also it. highlight sure. the city of Olds Mar as well. Sure, it'd be nice to host that. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Tony. Anybody else on this side of the room? Anybody on this side of the room? Anybody in the room? Chief, you want to say anything? <laughs> no? Just hanging out? Um, seeing no one will close the citizens open forum next, real quick, is the mayor's minute or so. Um, we just got some great news. Old Zamar ranks 14th. It's a new ranking by niche.com, ranks us 14th as the best suburb to raise a family in in the state of Florida. Uh, it ranks the suburbs based on age demographics, school ratings, crime rates, and access to affordable housing, child care, libraries, and groceries. A high ranking indicates that a suburb attracts young families with good schools and a safe community. And I will say that we are ranked 14th, and no other uh, city in Pinellas County was even ranked in the top 25. So that's Or Pasco County, right. the Tri County area. Yeah. Dunedin, top 25. Dunedin you know, was safety number 27. Harbor, top 25. Dunedin. Safety Harbor didn't even make the list. No. So. Dunedin, is, Dunedin is 27, Plant City is 32, Pinellas Park, which is 33, St. Pete Beach, 34, and Tarbon Springs, 42. That's it. So we'll take 14. For all of Hillsborough and Pinellas County. Yeah, and that's, that's out of over, there's what, like 400? Oh, cities, city, towns, city, and yeah. villages in the state of I think of Florida. I asked Deb about that, and I think they, they did it in it somehow different. They didn't. It wasn't just towns and cities, because if it was under a certain population, it went under towns. If it was under a certain population, it went under cities. So they had it weird how they did it. Right. So, but, you know, because it says of cities in Florida, uh -huh. I'm just going with that. I'm going with I that. I am, yeah. I'm taking it. <laughs> Uh, also, we had recently on uh, June 6th, Fire Ops 101 training at the St. Petersburg College Fire Training Center. Uh, myself, Council Member Siraki, Council Member Norris, and Al Braithway, who I don't think is here. Uh, he's probably out chopping up a car again. Uh, got to do that thanks to Jason Schwabe. I got to tell you, from my perspective, and the council members may chime in if they want, it was what an experience. Dean uh, taught one of, the, uh, one of the stations, and it really just gives you a, a, a whole new respect for just and just the physical um, uh, effort of the, what you got to do, um, and not to mention the the safety and and things like that. I mean, we all went into that burning building, simulated burning building, with it not on fire, so we could get our w ways around there. And then when they filled it with smoke, it was a completely different um, animal. And I did learn one valuable lesson: do not put all your bunker gear and your oxygen tank and your respirator on and then decide to bend over and pick up your gloves because you will, <laughs> you will fall flat on your head. 
I almost did. Thank goodness there was a chair there. Um, uh, thanks to Deb from our city clerk's office and everybody in the city clerk's office. Our co community coffee with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office went really well. It was the inaugural uh, community meeting, and it's a chance for the community to come together uh, and talk to the sheriff's department, ask questions of them, ask questions of the city. We had over 30 attendees, and thanks to Daddy's Grill um, for hosting that. I got to MC the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce annual awards and was surprised to receive the Upper Tampa Bay Cup. I was completely shocked, did not expect that. And if you know me, when I MC things, I like to make sure everything is in its place. And when there was no name by that thing, it was just driving me crazy, but it's because it was my name. So, <laughs> and congratulations to Jerry and Wanda Beaverlin, who received the first ever Lifetime Achievement Award and all the winners that night. Also, our Historical Society volunteer training. They had a great turnout Saturday. I was just downstairs and uh, had a lot of turnout for the volunteers. If you missed out, don't worry. There's more opportunities, or you can go to OldsmarHistoricalSociety.org. Also, Monday, June 30th is a deadline to submit recipes for the Centennial Cookbook. Contact the library for details. The city offices will be closed Friday, July 3rd, Saturday, July 4th, in honor of Independence Day. And lastly, happy 36 years to Kathy and Steve Horvath. Congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I was looking at the pictures of, was that the first year, the one that you posted on Facebook the other day? Yeah, that was great. 36 years, that's quite an accomplishment in these days. It took me two years to get, to, uh, two marriages to get 20 years, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna comment. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, man. And, and that concludes the Mayor's Minute. Next is our consent docket. We have three items on there. Approve the minutes of the May 19th, 2015 City Council meeting. Approve the minutes of June 2nd, 2015 City Council meeting. And approve payment to legal counsel. If nobody wishes to pull anything, I just need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes five nothing. Thank you. Next is the City of Oldsmar presentation of the Council Manager Award. Oh, Dan Seraki. Thank you, Mayor. Darlene, would you want to come up, please? How are you this evening, Darlene? Great, how are you? Come on over here. Come on over here. <laughs> Give me a hug. Thank Good to see you. Darlene is a friendly neighbor, motivated businesswoman, and strong community advocate. She has been my, she has been my neighbor for nearly 20 years. We both had our new homes built in East Lake Oaks in 1997. Now I moved in in December. When did you move in? November. So you've lived there longer than me. <laughs> oh boy. Darlene is an innovative professional with 10 plus years of progressive experience in radio and TV sales, marketing and on-air talent. She is a graduate of Temple University of Philadelphia with a BA communications and journalism. Darlene has expertise in consumer marketing programs, event planning, and sports marketing. She is an entrepreneur in the fragrance industry with an online retail store, owner and president of ExoticBlends.com. I've asked Darlene to join the East Lake Oaks HOA Board of Directors in 2011. Do you remember that? And, and what did you say? Oh my God, no, <laughs> no. Yep, Darlene came to my office and she was like, there's no way I wanna get involved in helping the East Lake Oaks Board of Directors. I don't wanna be involved in the neighbors. Well, she thought about it for about a day or two and then she called me and said, I'm gonna give it a try. I knew she could help improve our neighborhood. She went above and beyond the call of duty. She transformed the annual block party into an impressive family event with live entertainment, events for the children, and obtained local restaurants and sponsors to offset expenses. She truly loves the community and has helped bring the neighbors together. This year, she was elected to the East Lake Oaks Community Development District, seat two. 
Currently, Darlene has expanded her vision to help the entire city of Oldsmar by serving as vice chair for the 2016 People's Centennial Task Force. She has been working tirelessly, creating ideas, implementing themes, securing vendors, and pitching corporate sponsorships for planned events. She has encouraged all of us to catch on to ensure the success of our city's 100-year celebration. Darlene, I am honored to present you with the June 2015 Council Manager Award. Your community dedication, tireless enthusiasm, and creative talent show that you truly love Oldsmar. The mayor, city council, and our residents are fortunate to have a neighbor who cares as much as Darlene Lazy are. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Wow, <laughs> thank you all. I am, I am truly honored. I am so blessed to be in the community um, that we live and to be in the city of Osmar, to watch it grow for 17 years and to see the businesses and, and the communities uh, thrive. It is a beautiful experience to be able to help and to reach out and to give from my heart what's in my heart and share it with, with all of you. And this is a blessing and I thank you for the acknowledgement and I receive it. Thank you so much. Oh, and we know that's not the case. <laughs> Congratulations. Our next item is our employee service award, and Lynn Reeves is going to handle that this evening. Is anyone here? Yeah. Um, Mike Curl, would you come up? And you can bring your family if you want. It's up to you. <laughs> there you go. All? No, not all of them. No, I didn't bring them all. You're missing some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> missing too. Um, I'll give you that. Uh, tonight we're honoring uh, Mike's service with the city. Actually, he works in my department. Uh, he's worked with us for 15 years. Uh, he started out actually. Uh, I think he started out in Ariel's Park on the playground uh, as a kid, and then uh, he came to work for the city because uh, he lived right in the area. And over the years, he started out as a maintenance operator for the city and moved his way up, and uh, now he's a lead groundskeeper. He does like to use equipment and, uh, I'll say, destroy stuff. <laughs> Just agree? Yeah. Sounds perfect. Yeah. And, uh, one of the things that he did, he cleared the road that w goes out the back of Canal Park to Curlew. Uh, he did it with a track hole a few years ago. Yep. Uh, many, many things got left that way or disappeared. Yep. But also Mike's, uh, and, and this is a private joke between him and I, oh, but uh, Mike's a Bucks fan, but he's not a Tampa Bay Bucks fan. Uh -oh. he, he's a he's Milwaukee. a Milwaukee Bucks fan. <laughs> uh, just to tell you a little bit about what happened, <laughs> I uh, was out of town and parked my car, and I'd probably, I guess Mike had probably been here a year, year and a half, something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah. and uh, he put this huge sign across my windshield, "Go Bucks," but it was spelled B-U-C-K-S. So. Uh, I had to remind him I didn't know he was from Milwaukee because, as I understood it, he grew up in Florida. So, so you know, he's got two Bucks teams he's for. So uh, tonight we're here to honor Mike uh, in recognition of 15 years of service to the city of Oldsmar presented to Michael Curl, 2000 to 2015. And uh, there's that. And we want to thank you for your service to the city. And uh, yeah, my speech is prepared. Um, as far as the Milwaukee thing, you know, bucks are bucks. If you add a K, if you 
admit the K. It's still the same. <laughs> Though the fact that you're not a Bucks fan and when you came back, the sign said "Go Bucks." It doesn't matter how it was spelled. <laughs> <laughs> the riot is still there. So thank you very much. Mike, who'd you bring with you? Yes. Uh, you yeah, absolutely. I brought all my children. This is Madison and Alyssa, Haley, Destiny, my mother Diana, and my grandmother Jeanette in the back corner. Aww. Nice. <laughs> all around and get a picture. <laughs> All those girls. Oh, well, there's another one down in front. I love how these guys hide. <laughs> Congratulations. At least he's not a St. Louis Cardinals fan after today. <laughs> uh, um, next item is consider the appointment of Brian Mahoney to the Firefighter Pension Board. Brian is here. Hang on, you skipped over. Oh, I'm sorry. The of the <laughs> that was on purpose. You missed. The next. <laughs> well, I had circled it on my uh, on my list. So the next is the presentation of the uh, Garden Week proclamation. And I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, National Garden Week, whereas gardeners have a passion for nurturing the beauty and resources of the earth through the planting of seeds, the care of all plants, and the riches of their efforts, and whereas gardeners seek to add beauty, splendor, fragrance, and nutrition to their lives through the growing of herbs, vegetables, foliage, and flowers, and whereas gardeners work to preserve our country's traditional spirit of independence and initiative through innovation and hard work, and whereas gardeners advocate the importance of all creatures, large and small, that share our world and their roles in a balanced and productive ecology, and whereas gardening furnishes a challenging and productive activity for many citizens, for those just learning, as well as those having years of experience, and whereas gardening promotes a healthy lifestyle that lasts a lifetime, helps reduce stress from other areas of our life, teaches that, teaches that rewards can come from diligent efforts, and whereas gardening enables members of garden clubs across the nation and around the world to serve others in the communities where they reside and work. Therefore, I, Doug Beavis, Mayor of the City of Oldsmar, do hereby proclaim the week of June 14th through June 20th, 2015, as National Garden Week in the City of Oldsmar and acknowledge the importance of gardening and the uh, numerous contributions of gardeners and enhancement of the natural environment and beauty of this city dated this 16th day of June 2015, Doug Beavis, Mayor. And I will present that to Loretta and the group. And the flowers up on the dais are, are thanks to the Garden Club. Thank you. It's great. Coleus. Is that what they call? I, I read the directions. This is how it goes. It's a coleus, right? Hold it. Or my hold it. No, you hold it. Oh, I hold it. <laughs> Babe, this is a coleus, right? It's a plant. plant. To a man, this is a plant, not a coleus. Huh? It's the top of the and they will mold the plant. She's educating us. Yeah, she's <laughs> educating us. <laughs> There's no hiding. You in the back. Get up here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Oh, uh, stand up here just. Well, come on back up here. <laughs> we appreciate the proclamation and. The as you all know, I'm Loretta Wine. I am the past chairman now of the uh, National Garden Week. And by the way, we're we're a couple of weeks late. It was supposed to have been the first week, but there was a little communication <laughs> problem. So <laughs> National Garden Week was the first week, but we were, like I say, a little late. But anyway, we want to thank you and thank the council. And um, I'm going out as the uh, chairman of it. And this is Deborah Whalen. She's coming in as the new chairman. And uh, I wanted you to meet her and introduce her. And uh, Debbie, would you like to say a few words? Sure, I'll, I'll say a few words. <laughs> so it's a pleasure to meet everybody. I'm new to the club. And uh, just I wanted to thank everybody sure. for recognizing Top of the Bay Garden Club and the uh, National Garden Week. 
And I wanted to mention a little bit about the plants that you all yeah. have. Yeah. They're coleus, and it's a wonderful plant. That's what actually got me started in gardening when I was a kid. It's a, it's a very tolerant plant. You can plant it as a house plant. You can use it in the garden. It comes in many shapes, sizes, colors. It uh, doesn't like to be frozen, but it, otherwise it does wonderful in our yards. And you can cut the tops off about four, six inches when they get kind of long, put it in the dirt. Okay, it'll start all over. It'll start all over, or you can put it in water and it'll grow roots that way too. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very amenable plant. A variety of ways <laughs> for me to kill the plant probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very tough plant, very hard to kill. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, and you'll be seeing her next year. Good deal. Thanks, Good. Thank you. And thank you, Loretta. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Brian, you can come up to the podium if you'd like. Um, this is something we do. Uh, this is the appointment of Brian Mahoney to the Firefighter Pension Board. I believe it was the seat that uh, council member Seidel yes. uh, vacated when he became city council member and what we asked to do you to do and I don't believe you've come before us in this capacity before is we met because we did we mean business recently but it gives the opportunity for uh, council members to meet the per person that's on the board ask questions if they have any this is a pretty important um, position uh, the firefighter pension board so um, we appreciate you stepping forward do you have anything you'd like to say or well I'll start out with I was uh, I was telling them I was a, a 4 hr on the horticulture team for a number of years it got me to the state congress so it, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm all for the plants um, I, I have been uh, in the industry for roughly 25 years I helped move down uh, the entire retirement division of Chase down from New York back in 99 and was with uh, Chase managing that whole area for eight years. The last seven or eight years I was with Charles Schwab um, and then I started my own office. I was up on racetrack and I live on Lafayette so it seemed like a good thing if I move a little bit closer to where I live. So now I'm looking forward to buying a golf cart and driving uh, to work every day. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, I have extensive uh, licenses and backgrounds when it's coming into what you're doing with the pension. I'm still learning some of your nuances as far as the public pensions and the funding. But other than that, um, I'm pretty astute as to where you're trying to go. I had the uh, pleasure of actually sitting in on the meeting last week. Perfect. Perfect. Any questions? I, I you were on the board, so yeah. I, have, I just have a comment. It sounds like a complete upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. I second that. Oh, <laughs> nice. No, Thank listen. You. We appreciate you stepping forward. I mean, that you know, a lot of people don't realize what goes on in uh, on our pension board because it's kind of, I don't know, it's a little obscure from from everybody, and, and, and most of our citizens don't necessarily come in contact with what we do. Mm -hmm. it, it is a lot of work. It impacts our firefighters, obviously, pretty significantly. And, you know, there are times when there are difficult decisions that come before that body uh, as it relates to people being on disability and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's exciting to see that we have someone coming in who has an experience curve in it. I'm sure it's different. Uh, from, you know, you mentioned the nuances, but, uh, you know, we appreciate you stepping forward. Uh, in addition, I think Kathy's sick of hearing from me because I kept pestering her once a quarter for last the year date. or so. Dan and I noticed the date on the yeah, application. Yeah, you applied in 11-21-14. So, so. Yeah. so thanks for hanging in there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for winning. <laughs> <laughs> you voted for me. <laughs> no, we really appreciate your service. Thank you. It, it, takes a lot to do something for free. I mean, it's your free time and you're doing it and you're not getting paid. So it's it, volunteers are just awesome. And that, I can't even imagine that one. That one's got to be tough. It is a tough one. Yeah. yeah. About this time next year, you'll get a free dinner too, to say All thank right. you. I'll take it. <laughs> and a cup. Thanks. And a couple Thanks. If there's no other questions or if he has no other questions, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're on. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Brian. That's all under the city of Oldsmar. Next is our city attorney. Mayor, council members, item number eight on the agenda is the first reading and public hearing of ordinance 2015-03, revising the Tampa Road corridor plan. I'll read that ordinance by title only. Ordinance 2015-03, an ordinance of the city of Oldsmar, Florida, amending section two and section three of the Tampa Road corridor plan, identified as appendix three to the land development code, 
to revise principal building setbacks to permit automobile, automobile display ramps and to revise architecture, color, landscaping, fence and wall and sign regulations and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the reading of Re ordinance 2015-03 by title only. Thank you. And Marie's here. Is she going to, do you have anything? I'm just here to answer questions. I don't know what you want to. Isn't, this is what we pre you presented mm -hmm. on last time. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, no other questions? I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Oh, it is a public hearing. Do we have anybody in the public that would like to address this item? We were told there was going to be somebody from St. Petersburg College. I just want to make sure that they're not here to address this item. Um, seeing no one will close the public hearing, I need a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Uh, any discussion on this item? I think it's all positive. Yeah, it's, it's great. We went over this before. It's kind of interesting. We're actually setting up a meeting um, with one of the uh, council members from the city of Clearwater and their chamber president uh, to go over to the Tampa Road corridor. They're so impressed with how it looks and um, with Marie and her staff, you know, how to pull that off both when it was in writing and even prior to it being in writing. So they want to know how we how we did that. So maybe they can I, I uh, think implement the some of that. on the plan was really well done. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. A lot of great examples for people to work from, which sometimes is a challenge, I sure. think, for people. They envision something and not really completely, at least in the very beginning, appreciate that the reason that they want to go there is because some of the standards that are there. And I think it gives a lot of insight to people and uh, will help kind of um, continue uh, the vision there. So it was. I was going through it, and I was like, wow, it was really good work. Yeah, and I think to that point, um, it continues to, for lack of a better word, sell itself because it's not a new concept that we're trying to sell to businesses that, hey, we think this is a great idea. You know, there are a lot of examples already in the city of Oldsmar down the Tampa Road corridor that have done it. And it helped us, you know, with Circle K and most recently um, Thornton's to say, you know, this is why people are coming here because we're not US 19, we're not State Road 60. So. And I, I just want to say I had a, some, a conversation with someone outside of Oldsmar just last week, and they said how impressive that whole Thornton's Plaza and how different it looks and how great it looks. So kudos to Marie and everyone that worked mm. so hard to make it look the way that it does because they were very impressed. Sure. And I've said this before. A lot of it was done prior to it actually even being in writing. Um, you were able to talk some people into it. I don't know how you talked them into it. Don't want to know, but you at least you kept did. saying no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just kept saying no. <laughs> and yeah. then another thing that I noticed was all of the businesses in the building behind it stand out now. Yeah. Where before yeah. they were hidden and you couldn't see them. Now you drive and you see all the signs. So I bet that's increasing all their business too. Yeah. It's Even a, the parking, the drive, the, mm -hmm. you get through the parking oh, that, lot is just so much oh, better. Yeah. Oh, that was a mess trying yeah. to get through there before. So, um, yeah, well, thank you for that. And if no other comments, could you call the roll, please? Council Member Seidel? Yes. Council Member Sarecki? Yes. Vice Mayor McKee? Yes. Council Member Norris? Yes. Mayor Beavis? Yes. First reading of Ordinance 2015 03, revising the Tampa Road Corridor Plan, is passed with five votes for and zero against. That's all I have. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Next item is our city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, First item is to approve the renewal of the use agreement with the Old Mar Falcons Football and Cheerleading Incorporated. Uh, this is a use agreement for the operation of youth sports at Canal Park. Uh, this agreement has been in place several years. The only things that changed in it were dates, uh, fields to be used, and time of use, uh, and it's recommend approval. And nothing really other than that, than the dates, uh, everything else. So have we had a problem with them? I know at one time we had some issues with the Falcons organization, but it's been... No, so. they've been uh, actually pretty good for good. the last few years. Good. Other than some, they wanted the fields built uh, up at one time. Just, yeah. I don't know that it was a problem. Just, they wanted what? Fields, fields built up. Raised up? up like, yeah. Because of the flooding problem, but that was no, a while ago. We haven't had any real issues. Sometimes there's conflicts with soccer, but other than that, it's been fine. Any questions? If not, need a motion? Motion. Second? Second. <laughs> my role here. <laughs> <laughs> we have two motions and two seconds, so I think that's a first. Probably you can fight amongst yourselves. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 10 to nothing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Five to nothing. Adopt resolution 2015-13, revising the existing budget for fiscal year 2014-2015. Uh, 
I'll read the resolution by title only, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, revising the budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2014 and ending September 30th, 2015, authorizing the City Manager and the Director of Administrative Services to revise the existing budget as follows. From the general fund expenditures, budget revision increase in technical service of $18,000, parks, $10,000 increase, fleet maintenance, $7,000 increase, a transfer to the capital fund of $500,000, and a transfer out of contingency reserve of $535,000. Transferring into the capital improvement fund, $500,000, and expenditures in the capital improvement fund of $500,000. And I think recommend we recommend approval. Thank you. And I believe we've all met individually with Lynn or over the phone to discuss these numbers if we had any questions. Does anybody have any further questions? If not, I need a motion. So moved. And a second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5 nothing. Thank you. Approve a change order with Tampa Bay Construction Engineering Incorporated for the BMX Supercross track. Uh, this is to purchase uh, the start and finish line trusses a donkey or a scores table at, but it's called a donkey, a multi-purpose announcer tower and tower canopy uh, in the amount of $49,764.31. This will be change order one from bid 15-03. This will increase the contract to $1,443,919.77. Recommend approval. This is for the BMX project at Canal Park. The one that keeps getting rained on. Um, any discussion on this item? Need a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5 nothing. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> nothing. Okay. That's all good. That's all I have, Mayor. <laughs> That's great. City Clerk? Anything? This is really weird looking at you through all these bushes <laughs> and <laughs> shrubs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, City Council, select the voting delegate to Florida League of Cities annual conference. And I believe everybody on here, with the exception of one city council member, has done this task for us before. Yes. Have you done it? I yeah. thought you did. So I, my thought would be to let Council Member Siraki be our voting delegate for the Florida League of Cities. So moved. Second. Thank it's you. It's truly an honor. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so excited. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Dan. Congratulations. You, you are going to love it. <laughs> Sounds like I got set up. <laughs> first year. I did it, I did it my first year. In my what first year, too. I think everybody does yeah, it. Because nobody does year. it their second year. <laughs> They're the captain of the Relay for Life and then the voting delegate yeah. for the National League of Cities. It's exciting. I hope you don't mess it up. Do us proud, okay? Jim? <laughs> when you say I, say it with authority when you're there. Uh, it's an inside joke. He'll get it after the <laughs> League of Cities. Um, the next item is approve the excused absence of City Council Member Eric Seidel from the June 9th workshop session. That was something I mentioned at the work session that was in place before we set the date and we all were aware of it. So if. Good thing we no, all chose yeah. priorities that he didn't want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so if nobody has an objection, I just need a motion. So moved. Second. 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 Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes five nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our next item is council member comments, and we'll start with council member Norris. Okay, I wanted to definitely kudos to um, Oldsmar for the 14, for being number 14. That was just awesome. I mean, I reposted it on Facebook, and I took some of the facts out and everything, and it's it's just awesome to be able to be chosen um, for that. Um, but the biggest thing I wanted to, uh, you touched on it, uh, Mayor, was the. Um, award banquet and award dinner for the chamber and the chamber has a lot of events and sometimes we go to them and sometimes we don't I mean I mean personally for me you just don't have time to go to all of them but I was so honored to be there because of the two awards I mean all the awards all the people that got all of the awards the citizen of the, the citizen of the year went to the um, two that own Jameson laboratories I forgot their names but yeah they they got the old North citizen of the year the four students that got each from Sickles, East Bay, um, what are the other two mayors? Sickles, East Bay, Leto. East Lake. East Lake. East Lake. Uh, Leto, Leto and, and Alonzo. Alonzo. Yeah, and they got scholarships, and um, hearing their stories was really awesome, and, and having their family members there. Um, but the highlight of the night was the mayor was just 
blown away. He had no clue that he was going to get this Oldsmar Cup, right? But the tears and the joy to see Jerry and Wanda Beaverlin get Lifetime Achievement Award, they just started crying and they trying to get up and hug everybody. And I've got pictures on Facebook. If anybody's interested, I took a bunch of pictures. Um, but to, to witness that was beautiful because I can't think of anybody in the history of Oldsmar that's done more for, for Oldsmar than, than Jerry and Wanda. And it was just, it was, it was just, I smiled for a week after that. So that was awesome. And, oh and God. fire ops was, that was, you know, amazing. Yeah. It, you, you just, you, you can never underestimate how much physical ability it takes and how much stamina it takes. You don't think about it. You drive by a wreck and you see firefighters in all their gear and you don't think that in 15 minutes they're going to be wiped out. And I got to cut a door off a car. Oh, Three God. cuts, the whole door, boom. <laughs> it was really cool. Getting there at 7 o'clock in the morning, now that was impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was you're right mayor it was it was a great experience so. yeah it was it was neat and al braithwaite he's not here right now but boy he he could have sat there and cut that car into shreds he was having <laughs> such a great time so yeah. and to that point i want to acknowledge dean and and you and i joke a lot but your firefighters are just second to none and and uh you as the chief too and we all put that gear on and within minutes we were sweating but Dean's put on the full gear um, and did 41 flights, was it? 41 flights oh. in a, with the full gear and 40 feet of rope and pliers and respirator on in 20 minutes. And we did two flights and we were wiped out. Oh, yeah. Oh, two flights. You did it in 20 that day? That's pretty cool. So, yeah, yeah, in full gear. 75 pounds, did you say, roughly, plus or minus? So a whole new respect for just the effort that you guys put in over there and so. how much you babied the heck out of us i mean we were like these like pampered little princesses i mean we always had people giving excuse us excuse me i wasn't a princess <laughs> <laughs> we were <mayor>. um. <laughs> they, they were always giving us water and having to sit down and having to be in a fan giving us for our neck you know ice water you know towels it was really cool um a lot of paperwork we didn't want to get yeah, <laughs> council member killed over during fire ops. Yeah. You know, but it was it was it was a great experience, and I get my ride along with the fire department. It's like a fire department month for me, um, this coming Saturday. Awesome. Another seven a.m. seven a.m. to seven a.m. So. You're gonna have to come get her at her house. I asked Jason if I could just stay Friday night <laughs> to be there at seven a.m. But anyway, um, that was that's really cool. And then the last thing I wanted to um, say was I was also honored to be able to have lunch with Bruce and Captain Lubin and the new Captain Peterson. Well, he's not new, but he's gonna be, okay, Captain Lubin is retiring, and Captain Peterson is gonna be taking his, his place with the um, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. So I guess that's top North County cop, right? Or sheriff, right? Yeah, Peterson will be the- uh, Captain North Peterson, North. right. So north of 60, but yeah. And it was really nice to be able to get to know him a little bit and to welcome him to the city. And of course, I posted that on Facebook too, so everybody welcome him. Um, and and so many thanks to Captain Lubin for all of his service that he's given us mm -hmm. since he's been in charge. So other than that, that's it. It's all is good he, stuff. Is he retiring the 30th of this month or yeah. next month? June 30th. Could we invite him to the next meeting? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's, is it written in stone or that's what his date was? Don't, do you know? I think that's going to be the official date of June 30th. Okay. So he's not going on immediate said. vacation. Yeah. I'd yeah. like yeah. to do something we'll see. for him on yeah. July 7th. Can meeting. we see Ann? And we can see research that. That would be awesome. Yeah, he's such a great guy. Mm -hmm. and, he's and, he and, he's, and he's a resident. Yeah. yeah. And he lives in Oldsmar. It's wonderful. Nine or something. Oh, was it? Were you going to me? Yeah, Vice oh. Mayor. Sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to mention two things just for follow up. I got an email today from a resident, um, and I sent it to um, Lisa and Bruce, but I, it could be a county issue. But it was a resident had concerns about the construction barrels on Forest Lakes Boulevard that have been there since February. She said they were hindering sight lines and things like that when they're turning out on Forest Lakes Boulevard. So I wasn't sure specifically Near where- Near area of Thornton's or on the, um, up by the ice rink? I don't know. Must be up by the ice rink. But I did send it, I know Bruce is out right now, but I copied Lisa too, but I mean, it's since it's a county road, I'm assuming that their county, the county placed those barrels there. But um, yeah. I just want to mention that so we could follow up with it. Um, it just says Forest Lakes Boulevard. Yeah, that's probably where they're at. Onto Forest Road. There. It says onto Forest right. Road. Yeah. Okay. Construction there. Yeah, yeah, that's the... Okay. And she said it seemed like this construction's been done, but the barrels and things are still there. So she just wanted to hmm. see if we could look into it because she thought that they were dangerous. 
Um, secondly, I just want to mention again with you about club sport, the soccer fields, because yeah, I saw trying to schedule them Okay, great. Um, and then um, just a preview to something that's coming October 21st. It's a Wednesday, and I think it'll be during the day. We're going to be hosting a, a county workshop here in the city um, on historic preservation. So thanks to Jerry and Tozy for um, getting the city as the host for the workshop. And, Very cool. Um, the theme will be restoring our homes, and I might be speaking um, during it to talk a little bit about historic districts and things of that nature. Um, and well, that'll be at Tico Hall, but I'm not sure what time. But it should be Wednesday, October 21st, just to give you a heads up. Um, another heads up, Tampa Bay Brewing Company. I drove by that today. It's coming along, and that's right there on Racetrack Road behind the Lowe's Plaza. And um, for anyone that doesn't know, Tampa Bay Brewing Company is originally based in Ebor. They opened a second location in Ozona right on the trail. This will be their third location, technically <coughs> Tampa Lines, but um, they have been calling themselves Old Mar or West Chase. Their grand opening's on July 6th. 6th. Oh, nice. um, so if anyone wants to go to that, I definitely wanted to go by and because I don't know if we'll be doing a ribbon cutting since it's technically Tampa, but um, the chamber might because they're West Chase. And, okay, and awesome. All, so. so maybe we'll get to participate in that. Um, I wanted to wish everyone a happy Father's Day on Sunday, and if you didn't remember, remember your father. Um, this Sunday is Father's Day, and um, since we will not have a meeting prior to, also Happy Independence Day, Happy Birthday right. to Good. America and. Um, just wanted to say that and hope everyone has a wonderful and safe holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Seidel. Thank you. I, I had a question and I'm not sure if Lynn can answer it or not. Do you know of what, if we have any buildings in the city that are operating with solar power? We're uh, actually putting solar on the environmental shelter. Uh, but there aren't any other ones? No. Nope. No, this is a test and we're going to, uh, the excess electricity will be sold back to Tico. So this is a test. I think we actually brought it came up at the workshop. Came up at the and workshop. It's I, one of our. I priorities. remember it. I was just so, at our workshop, and then they're talking about potentially the library would be the next one that they're going to kind of look into, seeing if it makes sense. Well, I know the efforts that the city has put into, you know, be, becoming more green and so mm -hmm. forth, and you know, I'm not normally really up on all of those efforts per se you posted a tesla battery post today I know. so you're more up than you <laughs> i know are well i'm just say. you know what <laughs> and here's the thing you know i see things like that in in um tesla uh the power wall i don't know if any of you have seen what they've developed but it's a pretty amazing piece of uh technology to be able to store power and uh the potential for uh, buildings to go completely off grid and so it's interesting when you think about the prospects and possibilities of it sure. and, you know, to, to really utilize it. I mean, you have to have solar already set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I was just curious because it's not super expensive and it was one of those things that the price of it will come down anyhow. Sure. But I was just curious about it. And yes, I'm dorking out well, about it because... I, I do believe that we... Uh, I even uh, I asked for a study to see exactly along those lines a cost analysis or whatever study did, did that come out of the planning session did you well lisa would have gotten that right, i guess right, right mayor yes yeah or estefan so yeah, i believe they're going to work on a study for us we, okay. we asked for one well we just talked about that at the capital improvement session right. i think just now so, That's right. Right. It's, a, it's it's the discussion about it now that right. leads to action Absolutely. later you know and, and that kind of thing and so i'm not suggesting we go out and put up the power walls today but you yeah know. they're a little too expensive <laughs> we have i just mentioned too at the end of august there's a huge cisco conference in vegas that i'll have to miss a council meeting for but one of the sessions is on smart cities and they'll be talking about all the new technology that's oh, wow, available that's for terrific. cities so hopefully i'll get some cool mm -hmm. um ideas out of that too that might be able to talk about i only have a couple other things one is just uh you know congratulating the city on our ranking mm -hmm. and the staff you know when you when something like that happens it's a great opportunity for us to you know, leverage it from a promotion standpoint. I know Deb already had it up all over everything, which uh, it really, people take notice, you know, it's another way for them to look at us. And it, it's a compliment to the councils before us and so forth and our leadership and our staff who execute those things. So it's uh, a big congratulations. And, uh, you know, top 10 next year, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And, and since everybody had nothing but wonderful things to say, I really like 
the bushes that the ladies brought in. Uh, the the coolest. Yeah, coleuses. Yeah, Coleus. bushes. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's kind of funny if you're sitting right here where I am. If you look over here, it looks like the ladies are all hiding in the bushes over here. <laughs> it's creepy. Okay, so <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> all right, I'll end it on creepy. Okay, <laughs> creepy. Thank you, Council Member Siraki. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to say one thing about that fire ops. The, the coolest thing, and first of all, thank you, Dean and, and Jason. It was incredible for me because I've okay. never done anything like it. The, the coolest thing was going in that room, being the leader, couldn't see a thing, and try and holding that hose and trying to find the wall. Mm -hmm. That was just a great experience. And the breathing, you, you almost feel like you can't breathe. It was just really neat. Thank you for We that. turned your hair off. You didn't know that. <laughs> I'm just glad I could adjust it because I was like having a hard time breathing. And then all of a sudden I. <sighs> Linda was standing on the hose. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just graduated class 43 of the Sheriff Citizens Academy. That was a 11 week course. Nice. Good job with that. Hello, everyone. You guys want to check it out. It, Debbie Paula, you graduated years ago, correct? 15. Wow, that was a great learning experience. The jail, forensics, I mean, it was just a really good opportunity to be involved with that, and I recommend it to everyone. Last thing I have is we have some new brochures for the Centennial. These are hot off the press today. So would you want to pass some of those down? Mm -hmm. It is a events flyer and a sponsorship built into one flyer, so if any council members or mayor, if you need anything, uh, you're heading out to the city and you're stopping at corporate accounts, if you could help us get sponsorships, yep. this is the tool we needed, and thank you so much to Ann and her department for helping out getting this designed and printed in a timely fashion so that we can start promoting the centennial and sponsorships. And with that, I have one other thing. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, and that's it. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I really don't have much Happy Father's Day to, to uh, all the fathers and also to all the mothers that play the role as fathers sometimes. I know mm -hmm. I was raised in a single-family household, and so she had to play both roles. So uh, it's, a, it's a new world we live in today. And uh, so... Um, other than that, I guess, uh, for the record, if anybody gets asked, we've been asked numerous times, and I talked to Ann maybe about putting something together, or Lisa, uh, if you get asked about the crossing at Tampa Road, uh, the railroad crossing, we're, we're well aware of it. it. If you don't hold on to your steering wheel, it'll rip it out of your hands because what, of the... What about it? It just, it's completely falling apart, and it's probably going to be, what did she say? like almost a year before it'll be fixed because it's a pretty big undertaking to do the plans and and everything so if people it's the it you looks like black rubber mats if when you're going east or westbound oh. um you'll see them sticking up but i went across it today and i thought maybe i should bring it up in case you guys get mm -hmm. asked about it. it it is something that's in the works um it's just a bigger undertaking than uh, just replacing those i think they're going to do probably concrete similar to i believe the one on racetrack road near douglas if i'm not is that Ring a bell to you or no? No. So um, at any rate, just that's something for us to be able to be proactive and tell people that. So uh, I don't have anything else. Congratulations to Darlene. Yay. And uh, yay. And that's about it. Uh, if nobody else has anything. Len, you got anything for us? That BMX track done yet? <laughs> no. I need more. Ann has them in her office and I have more. Got it. I need your help. And if nothing else, I need a, tenant, a motion for the tentative July 7th agenda. And a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.